Thank you all for being here. All right, it's three o'clock. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and get started um, as you guys are just um, settling in. Um, so good morning, good, it's not morning, good afternoon. Um, my name is Ileana and I'm a librarian at the San Francisco Public Library in California on the unceded land of the Ramatush Ohlone people. Uh, wherever you're tuning in from, we're so happy to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Um, and welcome to our Viva Craft Series for Youth with Alejandra Ramirez. Um, every Friday at 3 p.m. from today to October 16th, we'll be sharing um, a special craft with you. So while you gather your supplies, um, I do have a couple of reminders and tips. Um, you'll notice our Zoom meeting tip slide uh, right here. We hope today's program will be as interactive and as engaging um, as a virtual craft program can be. Um, I'm going to ask uh, grown-ups in the room to um, take a moment to rename your Zoom window to your child or children's names that are tuning in. Um, this will allow Alejandra to see windows and call out to youth participating in the program. Um, we are also asking for you to mute yourselves unless called on and use the raise hand function or wave a hand. We'll see you. Um, and uh, feel free to utilize the chat to ask our um, staff questions directly. We are going to record today's session. Um, so if you prefer to not be on camera, please turn off your video by clicking stop video. You'll know that it's off because there will be a red line across it. Um, we, we welcome everybody to this program, but just want to emphasize that it is focused uh, for you. So um, the content will be directed to you. Uh, before we begin, a huge thanks to the Friends of the San Francisco Public Library for their generous support of the special series for Viva. We couldn't do it without them. We're going to make a mole. I want to um, introduce Alejandra. Um, Alejandra Ramirez is the Salinas, Salinas and Bay Area artist. Um, she's a museum educator and co-director of the Marigold Project. You can follow her on Instagram at alemina or at www.dayofthedeadsf.org. A little bit about the Marigold Project serves the community by creating healing spaces, connecting us to our ancestors and our impermanence in one spirit. Um, and today's craft, she's going to um, show everybody a little bit about what you can find um, from the Kuna women of Panama. So welcome Alejandra, thank you for joining us. Take it away. Hi everyone. Let me just click this. Okay. Okay. Can everyone hear me okay? See me okay? Um, if you have any questions, please let us know in the chat. Um, as soon as one of us gets to read it, um, you know, I'll make sure to answer um, as much as possible. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming today. I'm very excited to get to create art with you all. Let's see. Okay. All right. Well, today, um, again, it's Viva, it's Hispanic Heritage Month, Latino Heritage Month, and I thought it would be really special to create a craft from Panama. Um, for anyone who doesn't know, maybe the children, Panama is a Central American country that is bordered by Costa Rica and Colombia and is right in between the Caribbean Sea and the North Pacific Ocean. Okay. Let's see. Can everyone see? All right. Sorry about that, give me a second. Okay, we're back. Uh, most Panamanians are descended from indigenous Europeans, Afro-Caribbeans, and immigrants from all over the world. One of the three largest indigenous groups uh, in Panama 
are the Gunas, also known as the Gunas with the G. While the official language of Panama now is Spanish, and most indigenous people do speak it, the Kunas continue to practice their own dialect, language, and customs. Today, we'll be creating a craft inspired by the Kuna people who have been living, <laughs> who have been living in the island of northern Panama for over over a hundred years now. The Kuna people today create one of Panama's best known handicrafts, Mola. As you can see here, if you, can everyone see the screen with the red background, with the red table? Perfect. As you can see, this is my inspired Mola, okay? Uh, in the chat, we will be sharing a link to a slideshow of original uh, textile Mola, just so you can have, uh, have an idea um, of what, uh, you know, the very broad looking, the, the different uses of colors that the, the Kuna people use to create their mola. Okay. The mola is a textile art that is probably the most important part of the clothes the Kuna women of Panama wear. The origin of the mola comes from the painting of the body, um, basically tattoos, which was then practiced onto fabric. The Mola's art style offers the view of a world full of colorful indigenous culture. Through color and contrasting, contrasting patterns and shapes, the Kuna people tell us about their history, their practices, beliefs, and their home. Okay. Okay. So again, if you go to the chat, you'll be able to find the YouTube link to view a uh, a slideshow of various different mola. Um, Usually uh, they're uh, sewn into clothes um, and they're so colorful. There's so many different patterns, graphics. Uh, basically in the cloth, every color that you see is one layer of fabric. And that is, that is the biggest takeaway of the Mola style. There is no actual painting or printing on the, the fabric. It, everything is its own layer, okay? The layers are stacked and stitched together to make a design. Usually the designs, uh, the main focus of the designs that you'll see have animals, have uh, shapes, have like geometric patterns, okay? And usually the, the most layers you'll see on a mola style is six layers, but they can definitely start with only three. So I, if, it, if you were able to get the list of the um, materials that I requested, I asked for everyone to bring in six different colored papers. Um, I think that's definitely some, uh, the easiest way to go. You definitely do not have to use all of them. You can use three, four, five, or six as you see fit. Today, we're gonna to be following this craft, uh, Mola-inspired uh, craft that I did, but definitely along the way, if you are inspired to do a different design, you know, I'm sure you have very different colors than mine, um, please go ahead, you know, no artwork is gonna be looking the same. Please make sure that it looks, you know, how you envision it, okay? All right, does anyone have any questions? Okay, if you happen to have a question, you can uh, text us in the chat and send us a message on the chat. You can um, maybe do a reaction and we'll take notice of that. Um, you definitely don't have to be on video. You don't have to be on audio, um, but definitely as I'm going along the steps, I'm gonna try and pause and check in with everyone. Um, I'm usually very much used to being in a classroom, you know, in a workshop, in, in an actual physical space. Um, and for me, it's very important to pause and just check in where everyone's at. So definitely feel free to message me, ask me questions. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and get started, okay? I All can, right. um, 
Um, Alejandra, I'm also going to, um, I can bring in questions too, um, whenever you'd like them to be brought in. So um, if this is an opportunity, um, somebody did ask a question if there's um, any information available on this in Spanish. Yes, we will actually be sharing uh, this next week. Um, I'm creating a short lesson plan um, of this MOLA lesson and I'll be sharing it in Spanish and English for you. Um, y si por favor, si tienen preguntas en español, por favor, por favor, déjenos saber y les respondemos en cuanto podamos ahorita. Okay? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So another we're gonna go qu quick over the question. Materials. Another quick question that came in. <laughs> um, how do they stick the layers? Can you show a sample on the fabric? Can you show a sample? On the fabric? On uh, the fabric? On the fabric? So we're gonna go. Basically, they're stitched together. If you look at the YouTube link I shared, um, you'll see the 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 different textiles examples um and how uh, basically they're all uh stitched in the edges in order to stack all the layers together um today we're going to be trying we're going to be doing a little bit of that with our construction paper right this is going to be our textile um the blue is going to be our largest fabric right um and then as you can see, the butterfly here in the middle, let me see, the butterfly here in the middle, we have one, two, three, around three different layers, okay? I have the color of my butterfly that is black. I have a set, I layered it, I glued it on top of a second layer to make an outline, which I chose the red, and then on top of the actual black butterfly, I added small shaped layers, right? Making it three layers so far. Then when I added it all to the base fabric, that is four layers, okay? So we're gonna go over the materials really quick. I'm gonna be using six different colors today. Does everyone have around three to six colors? Perfect. Perfect. I see thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So you just need three to six colors. All right. The next, we're going to need a pencil, a color pencil, Okay, preferably something that we can write lightly on, draw lightly on, so that just in case we need to erase, it won't really pop up. Then we're going to need a pair of scissors and maybe some tape or a glue stick. Okay, if you, ha if you do have a glue stick or a, a bottle of glue, definitely, you know, liquid glue, you can definitely use that. Um, tape, it will also be super easy to use. Okay, so now we have these materials. Now comes the time to choose what color each construction paper, will, what role each construction paper will have. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you, of all the color construction papers you have, to choose one that will be the color of your butterfly and your two half suns. Okay. So just to clarify, the butterfly in yours is the black. Yes, for me it's the black. Mm -hmm. And also the two half suns are the same color. Okay, so you can react with the thumbs up as soon as you have chosen your, your color for your butterfly and your sun. Okay. Perfect. Okay, 
then the second color you will choose will be the actual main fabric that everything will be glued or stitched on. Okay. And you can put a thumbs up when you have that. Perfect, perfect. Does anyone have any questions so far? All right, perfect. Okay. And now the rest of the papers we're gonna put aside for a little bit, okay? And the main fabric, we're gonna be gluing or stitching everything on. We're gonna put very far away so we can make sure that we don't grab it by accident and we don't cut it, okay? Everything will be glued here towards the end. So make sure to, to, to not confuse it with the rest of your construction papers. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna go the first step with our um, color with our paper that we're gonna be using for our butterfly and our half sun. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and fold it in half one way. And then a second time. So we're going to be folding it into fourths. Okay. So and you can keep it folded. All right, perfect. And no worries if your if your folding is a little bit crooked or such. No need to start over. We just want to make sure that we have a small one fourth space to draw our butterfly on. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna place my folded paper horizontally. So, right, sideways. And we're gonna go ahead and start the drawing of a butterfly. You might have a specific way that you like drawing your butterfly. And if you would like to go ahead and do that, please do so. I'm gonna show a very simple way that I do mine, okay? And I'm gonna start right at the top in the middle. Okay, and I'm gonna do two small rectangles. Let's see, I don't think people can see that. Okay, so two small little rectangles. Then- On the folded gonna, part? Uh, on the folded part. On the, yeah, we're going to be using one, one square, one fourth of the paper. Okay. And so at the top, we're drawing two little rectangles and those are going to be the antenna. Okay. And then we're going to be drawing the head. So we're going to do a small little circle around the size of a, of a quarter. And then I add two more circles at the bottom. For the body. And I like adding a little tail. So I'm gonna do a little cone at the bottom. So it kind of looks like an ice cream, an ice cream cone, right? Okay, thumbs up if you have the butterflies antenna, the head, the body done. Perfect, perfect. Good job, everyone. Okay, 
Now we're going to add the wings. Some people like adding just two wings. Um, maybe the wings are heart shaped. I like doing four wings. And as you can see, they don't, they don't exactly all look the same, but I just like doing some kind of wavy shape around. Okay. Thumbs up if you have finished your butterfly. Perfect. Awesome, Marlene. Awesome, Betty. Katie, Kathy. Okay, Linda, thank you. Perfect. Now we're gonna open up our paper and we're gonna go ahead and cut out our butterfly. As we're cutting out our butterfly, don't worry too much about cutting a little bit outside of the line, cutting over the line. The, the side of the butterfly with the drawing, that's the part that we're going to be adding the glue on. So as we, as we glue it to the next layer of, of cloth, of color paper, you won't be able to see the drawing, okay? So go ahead and cut your butterfly and give us a thumbs up as soon as you're done and we can move forward to the next step. Well, um, they're cutting. There was a question that came in. Um, uh -huh. Will the Spanish English video tutorials include other templates or do you always use the butterfly as the sample? Um, thinking of different level learners, task level easier to more difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I. I wanted to for us to follow like a general, you know, similar template. Um, so I saw the butterfly kind of meeting all ages in the middle. But definitely, I encourage you all if you want to re, you know, instead of a butterfly, do a different kind of animal. It will. We will be following the same steps. Um, please feel more than welcome. And the template I will show. Um, Another example that I like doing, I like also drawing, instead of butterflies, I like drawing birds or flowers. So yes, I'll be, I'll be including that. Okay, so you're cutting your butterfly. And once you're done, please give us a thumbs up. Again, don't worry about cutting over the line. Uh, two more questions came in um, asking, why did we fold the paper? We're folding the paper because we're going to be using, thank you for that. We will be using two other, the two, two of the squares for the half sun, okay? So what's very important about this activity also is that we are trying to save all of our scraps. So make sure if you, if you have maybe a little bowl or a little area where you can keep all the scraps together, towards the end as we're adding patterns to our mola, we'll be able to use all those scraps into little shapes or rectangles or strips. All right, I am done with my butterfly. Thumbs up if you're done with your butterfly. Perfect. Awesome. Jennifer, Amelia, Kevin, thank you. Linda, Betty, Catherine, Katie, okay. Sushma. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to start going into the next step now. As you remember, Part of uh, what's very important about the Mola textile is that each color is a different layer, right? So we're gonna be adding a back layer to this butterfly. If we're looking at the example I made, the back layer I added was the red paper. 
So I'm going to so go ahead and choose a color paper that you will like to have as the background to your butterfly. Okay, thumbs up when you've chosen your color. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, Daphne. Thank you, Linda, Jennifer. Thank you. All right. So now, again, as I was mentioning, it's really important to just save all the scraps and such. So we'll be gluing the butterfly towards one of the edges of the paper that you chose. But what's really important, as you can see here, is that we're able to have enough, enough of the background paper all around, right, of the butterfly to create an equal size border. Okay. If you're wondering maybe, you know, how much border, how the size of the border, how, how it should be, maybe measure it with your pencil. The width of the pencil would be a good idea. Maybe your pinky, right? So it's, it's a pretty thin layer, just enough so the color can pop out once your whole artwork is com complete, okay? So again, glue the butterfly towards your edge. And we're gonna go ahead and glue on the side of the butterfly where you can see the drawing on. Okay, so mine is glued. And now with my pencil, I'm going to draw a equal, as equal as I can be, okay, um, border all around the butterfly. And we want to do this lightly because this is the part, this is the view that the artwork will be on, right? Um, so if we have some pencil marks left around, we just want to be able to erase it pretty quick and not also wrinkle or rip the paper. Okay. Let me see. Alejandra, oh, there you go. You got it. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let me connect it again. Got it. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna draw my, draw my border really quick. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up when you're done cutting out your butterfly on the second layer. And all the scraps you're getting from the red paper, make sure to put them all aside, you know, from the second paper, make sure to put them all aside with the first paper scraps. Let's just keep everything together. Okay. Thumbs up if you're done with your butterfly and the outline. Okay, awesome, Jennifer, Amelia. Mm -hmm. Perfect, Tiffany. Thank you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. I see some kids still working on it. Awesome. Okay. 
So now remember how I told you the main fabric, the main background paper that you want to have to put it all the way far away. We're gonna go ahead and grab that and we're gonna make our first, we're gonna add the first piece to it. So I have chosen blue. You see the contrast of the red and the blue and the black, great, right? All right, so I'm gonna glue the back of my butterfly again. And I'm going to place mine right in the middle. Okay. Send me a thumbs up if you're done gluing your butterfly to the background. Awesome, Isabella. Thank you. Awesome, Bridget. Okay. If you want to, if you see that you want to place your butterfly in a different area, it's totally fine. Awesome, Santi and Cleo. Thank you, Marco. All right. Now we're going to be repeating these same steps again while we do the half sun. Okay. So again, as you can see here, I did with my with my first paper, I did a butterfly and I did two half suns. Okay. So we're gonna go back to the first paper we used that was folded. Okay. And we're gonna keep two squares together. So we can cut the rest of the paper off right now. Okay. Okay. So we only need two squares. It's okay if you if you cut all the pieces separately. We'll just be stacking the two pages, the two small squares together. Okay. Thumbs up when you have that. Awesome, Linda, Arlene, thank you, Daphne. Okay, Isabella. Perfect, perfect. All right. Now, okay. So now we're gonna place it right vertically on in front of us. And we're gonna be drawing the half sun. So I like to layer the two pieces of paper together because I only have to make one half sun. And then as I'm cutting the two layers, you know, I save myself time from drawing two things, right? Okay, so the half sun, I think of it as the, the, the circle of the sun being around three fingers size, okay? So we're gonna do a half circle right on the edge of the paper, right on the edge of the paper, okay? It's okay if you would like it to be smaller, if you would like, would like it to be bigger, totally fine. And now we're gonna add the sun rays. And so I like going, let me get this a little closer. Okay. So the sun rays, I do them as like rectangles, long rectangles. So the first one, then I do the second one at the bottom. I do the third one 
horizontal right in the middle. So I have these three sun rays so far. And then I add two last ones right in between those three rays. Okay, thumbs up when you have your sun and the, all the rays ready to go. Perfect, Katie, Katie, Kathy, Isabella, Catherine, Arlene, thank you, thank you. All right, now as we said, we have two stacks of papers together, right? We're going to hold both together. As, we're, as we cut the sun outline, all right? So at the end, we're gonna end up with two half suns, okay? Go ahead and start cutting. And the same way as when we did the butterfly, don't worry about cutting over the, the pencil lines you've done or a little bit outside of the line. That's okay, this side will be the one that we glue onto the paper. If you're having a hard time cutting um, with the two pieces of paper layered, you can totally draw in the second paper uh, the sun again. That's totally fine. And again, remember the sun is around three fingers width. And then the sun rays we can do as little rectangle strips. Okay. And again, all the scraps are left over Make sure to push, push them to the side with the rest of your little scrap mound that we'll be using in a bit. So I am being left with my two sun rays. Okay, awesome, Holly. Awesome. All right. Now, if you can imagine the next step, right, from the butterfly is gluing it onto your second color paper. So in my case, it was the red paper. So I'm going to go back where my scraps are and grab my cut up red paper. And before I glue my half stones there, I'm gonna make sure that I glue them where I know there will be, there is enough um, background paper to create an equal border. Okay. So go ahead and glue your half sun. Glue the side where the, the, the pencil marks are at. Okay. So I've glued my half sun onto the background paper that will be its outline. Okay. And now the next step will be cutting. Sorry, it will be drawing the, the border. Okay. So definitely if you don't need to draw the border, if you as you can cut, you can see that the border will be kind of equal size. That's totally fine. I just think sometimes it's easier just to make us a little bit less nervous. It's easier for me to sometimes follow the line just to make sure as I'm cutting, I don't lose track of the space that I need. Okay. Okay, 
So I've created the, the outlines for the border to my son. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut it out. Alejandra, we lost uh, the overhead. Lost the overhead. Yeah. Wonderful. There it goes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for letting me. Yeah. Know. Sure. Okay. And you can give us a thumbs up as soon as you're done cutting the borders on your half sun. Okay, I just finished cutting one for mine. And I'm gonna go on to the second one. I finished my two half fun. Thumbs up if you finished yours. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Santi and Cleo. And all the scraps from that paper we can move to the side and we'll be using them just in a few steps. Okay. So give me a thumbs up as soon as you have your two half suns. Awesome. Thank you, Noreen. Thank you. Thank you, Betty, Isabella. Thank you, Katie, Betty, Arlene. Awesome, thank you. Okay, the next step, if you remember from the butterfly, is to glue it to your background, to your main fabric, okay? So I chose glue, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue it. Here you can see, I chose to place them on either side of my mola, right? I placed them in the center, a little bit lower. However you see fit, however you would like your mola to look, please go ahead. You might want to put the sun actually at the bottom, right? The bottom side, the bottom top. As soon as you have glued them both, please send us a thumbs up. Glue one here. Awesome, Holly. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. Okay, Linda, thank you. Okay. 
Thank you, Arlene. So again, right now we have glued the butterflies and the half sun. Awesome, that looks beautiful, Tiffany. Looks awesome, I love the color choice. All right, now comes the very special last part. We're gonna grab the rest of the construction paper we have and the scraps that we have, and we're gonna be creating different patterns, cutting out different shapes and covering all the background and all of, of our butterfly and half sun. Okay, so I'm gonna be showing you just, you know, a little bit how I did this. But as you can see, the background, I cut up strips of paper. I cut out really thin, long rectangles, okay? I did the same for the sun rays. I chose one color. Uh, for the sun, I cut out a circle and I divided it and I folded it in half and then I cut out a little smaller circle which left me with the rain. And that was just very, a very easy and cool thing to try on on my half sun. On my butterflies, you can see I cut out, I used the purple paper and I cut out um, smaller shapes for the body. For the wings, I did a teardrop shape, right? And I cut out some little circles right for the detail. So however you see fit, this is your chance to make your own. Now is your chance to make it your own. Um, Alejandra will be right back. Looks like she may have a connectivity issue. Uh, these things happen, especially with the virtual programming. So thank you for your patience. Um, she'll be back shortly. We'll get her back and set up. Um, but the, the photos that have been shared and the pictures that have been shared are fantastic. This is a great opportunity to continue um, just putting in questions. Um, I have them ready for Alejandra when she comes back. Um, and Alejandra will, will definitely be back next Friday for our next program, which is going to be focused on Selena and um, Cumbia. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you, Eliana. I'm back. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Actually, while, while you're back, um, a question did come in. Are mm -hmm. molas traditionally symmetrical? As you were showing your beautiful um, sample, I think yeah. maybe that created that question. Yeah. I think my style is very symmetrical. I do see if you if you have if you do have a chance to check out the YouTube channel the YouTube link I shared, you'll find that sometimes some molas are very symmetrical. Especially, I noticed the the molas that I use um, around three colors. That's what I found. Um, that's how I found it to be. Um, however. Sometimes like I'll see a lot of animals such as tigers as the focus of the mola, right? And that already, if it's in the middle, it does, it's not, it's not a symmetrical artwork. I see um, people doing strips such as this one. Let's see. I, I chose to do all of mine vertical. Uh, in a lot of molas, I see different parts of the strips, um, different parts of the strips throughout the background kind of intersecting with each other. So this fourth will be vertical and then over here you'll find some being horizontal. Over here you'll find some being sideways. Um, but in general, it, it is very much about playing with all the shapes, you know, um, geometric shapes. Um, so definitely, at however you see fit, um, please go ahead and, and create your artwork like that. Let's see. If you have any other questions, please let us know. Great, great time to ask that because another one just came in. Um, <laughs> is a repeating pattern on a larger surface area or does the entire image just in itself larger? Um, and somebody will check the video out after the class. 
Can you repeat the question one more time? Yeah. Um, is a repeating pattern on a, largest, on a larger surface area or does the entire image just in itself appear larger? I, I, it's my question. I can. Okay, fabulous. So, Clarify. so we have, we, right now we have this eight and a half by 10. So in my mind, I'm like, wow, that's cool. But then it mentions curtains and wall hangings and placemats. Is it one image that then can be repetitive or do they make one image to fit the size of the the garment or the curtain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in general, I think it's one image that they fit. I don't, in general, like the, I guess how I see it, the difference that I did in the one following the mo the usual Mola style was that the two half suns, you know, right? Like it shows like it as a, as a repeated pattern, but it's not something I really saw when studying their work. Um, in general, Mola people, they, uh, they're giving stories uh, through, through their images. So I don't really, when I think of like repeating, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I, I don't think I have really seen that. Um, or at least in the main focuses, right? Like here, I, yes, I have the half sun, but my main focus is the butterfly. Right. So here, mm -hmm. are you ready for one more question for me? Yes. You yes. brought up this story and immediate like, oh, wow, this would be great to do like a read aloud. Have you, and now that we're with the library, the San Francisco Public Library, do you um, or a fellow uh, librarian have a suggestion of a book that could accompany this project and hopefully in Spanish? I have I, of requests. <laughs> <laughs> I love that question. No, that's a great question. Um, we do have some uh, recommended reads that'll be listed in the chat. And I could also send that out when I send out the PDFs. Um, I don't know if any of them are in Spanish, but um, but I can we can do some research there. Yeah, librarians and museum educators and teachers for life. We love it and parks. We love parks too. Great question. Um, another question that came in. Uh, Br I think Bridget, if that feel free to continue chatting or or asking questions if you if you need to. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there's another question that came in. Um, uh, Betty asks, not to complicate things, are mola sometimes made in reverse manner, layered from full top and cut down through layers? Um, what is our background actually have shapes cut into it and next layer, same process? Thanks. And, and uh, let's see, Betty, if you would like to clarify your question, feel free to unmute yourselves. Um, I just have to say, this has been amazing that everybody has been just so thoughtful um, of the group and I'm um, continuing to kind of work through Alejandra's steps and, um, and really ask questions. Um, so Betty, if you'd like to clarify. Okay, at the, risk, at the risk of seeming ridiculous, no, no. Uh, I just wondered, um, somehow I thought this process went in kind of a reverse manner where you had to kind of cut the shapes you wanted from the top and then figure out each successive layer and what other color would come through. So it would, it would take a lot more material and forethought, but it, mm -hmm. it sounds like it's always additive like we did, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, but I have seen, um, especially, I have seen some textiles and then some of the art activities um, that other people do for MOLA where, so here in my background, they will cut out pieces and then they will grab another textile, right? Place it right in the background and it yeah. will be seeable. Um, and so textile wise, that is possible. And then it would just be stitched right in the middle, right, right in the edge of the top textile. Yeah. Takes a lot more material that yeah. way though. This is, makes more sense. But I've looked at textiles and tried to figure that out. Mm -hmm. So I'm not totally crazy <laughs> on asking that. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Uh, enjoy, no, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. 
This is making me want to try it. When I thought about doing it the other way, I'm like, oh no, too much planning. I'm curious. I'm curious. My time in Panama was so long ago, and I'm trying to remember when I first mm -hmm. saw these, which is what caught my interest in your um, class today. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember how it felt, the molas, and to answer the previous woman, to think about the previous woman's question, mm -hmm. I, I feel like it what did not feel like layered, like that it was embedded. Mm -hmm. or, does that make sense? But no, I don't remember. It was too long ago. Um, well, how does it feel as a textile? When it's done? I think uh, what they also include as layers is uh, the the sewing, the material of that. So a lot of times the so as you can see here, right? The red I chose as. Um, the, the red that I chose as the border, it, it's a whole layer in the background. In a lot of Mola's practices, it will actually just be in a sewn in border. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very common practice. Um, and so it, it's just something that um, takes a little bit more time, right? A lot of times, uh, I see especially if they're trying to do a thin layer, they definitely sew the whole border in. If they're trying to do multiple layers or pretty thick layer in the background, um, that's when they just uh, sew the edges, right? Like as, as little horizontal uh, sewn in. Any other questions before we head out? Ken, can you put up your the first fork? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you could do yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. So as you can see, I definitely, you know, I just grabbed my scraps ah. and the extra paper, um, and I just did a lot of strips. For me, that was my okay. When I see Mola, I see so many. Uh, just patterns, patterns of lines. Um, that's something that I, I really loved about this, this art style. Um, so that was a pretty easy choice for me. I just decided to, you know, do a pattern with the colors also. But in general, a lot of Mola styles, when they do strip lines, um, it's basically two colors just contrasting each other. So background and the, and the actual strip. And, and do you use like some sort of molds oh, or right. stencils to cut your out so you do everything freehand? I, I do everything freehand. I make sure that, you know, as I draw um, for me, I make sure to not stress out too much about, uh, you know, like my butterfly being equal to equal, <laughs> looking the same on both sides. I always think it's the end product. I think it's very easy sometimes if we, if I worry too much about following, you know, a very a symmetrical uh, drawing style, um, I'm going to get stuck there. And, and Mola. So yeah. here you can see, you know, in this part, my butterflies, the wings are definitely not symmetrical, you know, not the same size, but the end product, you know, I think it's going pretty well. Um, yeah, so just I, you definitely, a lot of people do practice this art activity, creating templates. However, just the time, I wanted to instead just have us follow like a simple three-step butterfly drawing process, um, you know, and at the end, we, we glued the part that we drew, so we didn't even see it. Um, so yeah, thank you. So I far. wanted to share <laughs> some, oh, I wanted to share some appreciations that are coming in. Um, um, as we're fi as we're finishing up, um, so thank you, very creative class, um, and um, somebody, it's really bringing bringing memories back. Um, there is someone who Sheila has had several molas, and they're all reverse applique, um, in other words, cut out, <laughs> and she was lucky enough to get hers in the San Blas Islands many years ago. 
So I'm just hearing just a lot of appreciation for, um, for this craft and as whether it's a textile or whether it's what we have in front of us, right? Paper, <laughs> construction paper. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, if we're, we're coming up on time, but Alejandra will be back next Friday. Um, you can follow her on Instagram at A-L-E-I-M-A-N-A. -A -A. Uh, we would love if you uh, wanted to share your what you've created here and tag it. Um, tag her, tag the Pu San Francisco Public Library, um, and um, add our hashtags Viva, and we'd love to feature those as well. Um, um, Alejandra, thank you so, so much for, um, for bringing this to us. Um, there is just so much appreciation and love for Panama and for uh, bringing this thank craft. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll yeah, hopefully no, we'll see everybody. Thank you. thank you everyone for having me. Yeah, we'll see everybody next Friday, uh, same time, same place uh, for Selena y Cumbia. All right. Thank you thank very you. much. Bye.